that's the book I was looking for. Oh, The Fisherman and His Wife. One of the stories Mom used to tell us all the time. It doesn't end like the other three we've read. It doesn't? It doesn't. Not your usual happily ever <coughs> after. But Mom loved it. Why? Guess this will help. She wrote on it. What did she say? To my dearest angels, love for silver, love for gold, it was, is what leaves you in the cold. Not once, but always, always. Love for money, love for now, tearing up a wedding bow. Not once, but always, always. Dad, should we go, go on? on. There once was a fisherman who lived with his... There was... Oh. The Fisherman and His Wife by the Brothers Girl. There once was a fisherman who lived with his wife in a rundown shack by the sea. And every day he'd go fishing in the briny deep. But one day, as he was sitting out half asleep, he felt the big one tugging on his line. Here. Listen, fisherman, I'm no common flounder. I'm an enchanted prince. Throw me back in the water. I shan't be able to Oh, that's all right. As a rule, I throw back all fish that talk. Thank you. <laughs> so saying, the flounder swam back into the sea, and the fisherman returned to his wife in their home. <sighs> Wife. Have you caught anything today? No, all I caught was a flounder, but he said he was an enchanted prince, so I threw him back. Did you not wish for anything? No, what was there to wish for? <laughs> Isn't it bad enough that we live in this wretched, filthy hovel? You might at least have wished for a nice, clean cottage. He will certainly grant you that. No, wife. What am I to go back there for? Well, it was you who caught him and let him go again. He will certainly do that much for you. Be off now. Go and ask. All right, I'll ask. The man was still not willing to go, but he did not want to anger his wife, so he went back to the sea. When he reached it, he found it no longer shining and bright, but dull and green. Flounder, flounder in the sea, privy hearken unto me. Isabel, my willful wife, does not want my way of life. Hello, fisherman. Hello, flounder. I had to call you back, for my wife said that since I'm the one who caught you, I should have wished for something. Oh, of course. What did she have? She wants a nice cottage. Go home. She has her wish fully. Then the man went home and found his wife no longer in an old hut, but a pretty little cottage stood in his place. Husband, come inside, come and see. There was a setting room and a bedroom. With a brass bed. And a kitchen with a larder full. And outside there were chickens and ducks and geese and a big fat rabbit. And a little garden with vegetable and fruit trees. Is this not nice? Yes, and let it so remain. You and I shall live in this little cottage very happily. We shall see about that. And with that, they ate something and went to bed. Uh. Husband, wake up. Uh. This cottage is too cramped. Go back to the flounder and tell him I've changed my mind. I want to live in a big stone castle. Go back to the flounder and tell him to give us a castle. You want a big stone castle? All right, I'll ask. The man's heart was heavy and he went unwillingly. He said to himself, It's not right. When he reached the sea, he found it no longer dull and green. It was still calm, but dark, violet, gray. A strong wind was coming up. 
Flounder, flounder in the sea. Prithee, hearten unto me. Isabel, my willful wife, does not want my way of life. Hello, fisherman. Hello, flounder. The cottage was lovely. Oh, you're welcome. Wait, wait, no, no. I had to call you back since my wife has changed your mind. She wants a big stone castle. Go home. She has to wish for it. The man went home thinking he would find no house, but when he got back, he found a big stone palace and his wife at the top of the steps waiting to go in. Husband, come in with me. The walls were hung with beautiful tapestries. Rich carpets covered the floors. The rooms were furnished with golden chairs and tables. Crystal chandeliers hung from the ceilings. The tables grown under every kind of delicate food and most costly wine. And outside there was a courtyard half a mile wide. Oh. And just beyond that there was a forest and a park with... Stags and hinds and hares. And everything that one could want. Sounds this not worth having? Yes, and let it so remain. We shall live in this beautiful palace and be content. We shall think about that. And with that, they went to bed. <laughs> Husband, peep out of the window. Would you not want to be king over all of this land? Go back to the flounder and tell him that you consent to be king. I don't want to be king. What? Why would I want to be king? All right. That's all right. It's all right. I'll be the king. <gasps> then the wife exited quickly before the man could argue with her. So he went, but he was quite sad because his wife would be the king. It's not right. It's not right. When he reached the sea, he found it dark, gray, and evil smelling. A storm was raging. <laughs> flounder, flounder in the sea. Privy, hearken unto me. Isabel, my willful wife, does not want my way of life. What now, sister man? She wants to be king. Oh, she is a king. And the flounder could not wait, and when the man got home, he found his wife, the king, waiting for him. Wife, are you now the king? Yes, now I am the king. What a wondrous thing to be, the king. No, husband, it's not. I find that being king makes time weigh heavy on my hands. I cannot bear it any longer. I am king, but it's not enough. I must be pope! What? Wife, I think that is truly beyond the flounder. Nonsense. If he can make a king, he can make a pope. <laughs> There's only one pope in all of Christendom. I'm not going to ask that fish to make you a pope. Do you forget to whom you are speaking? I am the king. You are but my husband. You must obey. She was frightening as he went, but he was quite dazed. She shivered and shook. His knees trembled. A great wind arose over the land. The clouds flew across the sky. It grew as dark as night. The leaves fell from trees. The water foamed and dashed upon the shore. In the distance, the ships were being tossed to and fro on the waves. There was still a little patch of blue in the sky among the dark clouds. But towards the south, they were red and heavy as in a bad storm. Flounder, flounder in the sea. Prithee, hearken unto me. Isabel, my willful wife, does not want my way of life. What does she want now, sister man? She wants to be Pope. Of course she does. Go home. Your wife is now your Pope. The man went home and found that his wife had become the Pope. Uh. Wife? Are you not the Pope? Yes. Now I am the Pope. Higher you can.
cannot go. We shall think about that. And that they went to bed. The fisherman, kneeling at his wife's feet, curled up to go to sleep. But the wife remained standing in an attitude of prayer. When the dawn reddened, the sky and the sun began to rise. The wife looked out of the window and began to cry. Ah! Why can I not cause the sun and the moon to rise? Why? Husband, get up. Go back to the flounder and tell him I want to be... Tell him I want to be... God! Oh. My. God. What did you just say? If I cannot cause the sun and the moon to rise and set, I shall not be able to bear it! Wife, I think the flounder cannot do that. Remain the Pope. You make a nice Pope. Then she flew into a terrible rage. She kicked I shall and screamed. I shall not bear it any longer. Now! Go! Then he tore away like a madman. Such a storm was raging that he could hardly keep on his feet. Houses and trees quivered and swayed. Mountains trembled and rocks rolled into the sea. The sky was pitch black. It thundered and lightning. The sea ran in black wind. Mounted high, crested with white foam. He shrieked out, but he could hardly make himself heard. Oh my gosh. Flounder, flounder in the sea. Breathe thee hearken unto me. Isabel, my willful wife, does not want my way of life. Now what does she want? She wants to be the Lord of the universe. She wants to be God. What? She wants to be the Lord of the universe. No, fisherman. No. This time, it cannot be. Now you must go back to your hovel by the sea. There was once a fisherman who lived by the sea with a wife in a rundown shack. And every day, they'd fish, and they'd fish, and they'd fish. <laughs> love so patient, love so kind, rainbows gentle on my mind. Not once, but always, always. Love unheard of and unseen, love with no doubts in between, not once, but always, always upon a time.